I was playing Honkai Star Rail, and I finished the first chapter of the main story, which took place on the planet Eurelo 6. And I thought that the ending was really messed up. Because after defeating the crazed Supreme Guardian Kokolia, who was revealed to not only have caged half the population underground in poverty for decades, but also attempted to destroy the entire planet in the name of the greater good, the new Supreme Guardian, Kokolia's daughter by the way, decides to cover up the entire fiasco, preserve a lie that's been carried on for over 700 years, and paint her mother in a good light. Just as a quick refresher, Kokolia, as far as I know, was basically a very righteous, dedicated ruler, until she heard the voice of the Stellaron, which persuaded her to abandon Kleepot's ideals of preservation and instead pursue a path of destruction. She says, My conviction was once steadfast, unparalleled, until sudden change arrived and threw everything into chaos. Another choice appeared before me, a subversion of the old order and the welcoming of a new world. And compared to the illusory, ever more distant preservation, this was so tangible. Essentially, Kokolia took the easier path of destruction, what she thought was more tangible and gave her the idea that you must break the old to build the new. Obviously, that turns into a boss fight, and after the boss fight, we have this amazing dialogue cutscene. There's so much to do. The people have felt the effects of the engine of creation. There are so many questions to answer, so many truths to reveal. I don't know whether I can get the people to accept all this. Can I really do that? Tell everyone about mother's true motives? About a lie perpetrated for 700 years? No. No. No way. Sila, I... I don't know how to explain it. I don't think there's any other way. In the underworld, we tell the kids, things will be better tomorrow. Everyone knows it's a lie, but it gets them to sleep with some hope. Can you imagine the consequences if we told the people what happened here? They'd be devastated. If we can't trust the Guardians, who or what can we trust? <sighs> Mother died to preserve Bellaba. What? The visitors from beyond the sky told her the secret of the Stellaron. She knew that Elisa Brand, the first Supreme Guardian, had failed to destroy it. And yet, she decided to challenge its power, a power beyond human comprehension. Supreme Guardian Kokolia sacrificed herself to dispel the dark clouds enveloping this city. From here on out, that's the truth the world will hear. What do you think? It keeps the hope of preservation alive, at least. First of all, just from a character standpoint, how does it make any sense for Sila to be the one to come up with this idea? Sila, who grew up in the desolate underworld in an orphanage, no less, who goes into combat every day because she's one of the few who can actually fight the overwhelming number of monsters who roam the underworld. Sila, who has seen the unfair dichotomy between life of overworlders versus that of underworlders, and who has been so cynical of the government of Belabog that she initially scorned Branya's presence and undermined everything she said. That's Sila. The whole reason for the underworld's desolate conditions was due to a lack of transparency and communication between the overworld and the underworld, and now Sila wants to maintain that deceit and even suggests it. Second, the reason for the lie is weak as well. Sila backs up her whole hope argument by saying that adults in the underworld tell kids that things will be better tomorrow. But Sila's analogy doesn't even work because she's literally comparing the entire population of Yorilo 6 to young kids. She's essentially naming herself and Branya to be the adults of Yorilo 6, and implying that the denizens of the planet are too innocent to handle the events that took place. People can't handle the truth, they're too stupid for it. We should make decisions for them because they're not as intelligent as us and will not be able to see what's actually good for them. Not only is the irony of two 19-year-olds who were recently on the run from the police now making decisions for the greater good outright hilarious, there are also some jarring connections that can be found between this sort of reasoning and the philosophical foundations of certain radical real-world governments that are infamous for mass censorship. Continuing on with Sila's analogy, another thing that isn't accounted for is that kids will eventually become adults. The two situations are inherently different. It's fair that the adults lie to the children in this case because 1. Children are, scientifically, less mature, and 2. The children in the underworld will eventually learn the truth. The basis of choosing who is an adult and who isn't is indiscriminate and based on age. But the denizens of the Eurelo 6 will never learn the truth. In fact, it seems like Branya wants the former Supreme Guardian of Eurelo 6, her mother by the way, to go down in history as a Jesus-like figure who sacrificed herself to save humankind, when in reality she literally died for the exact opposite. Branya has decided that the population should not learn the truth literally just because she thinks they won't handle it well. Branya and Sila in this portion of the story suffer from very severe main character syndrome. I've also seen other arguments for defending Branya's choice, like how it's needed to preserve stability and trust in the government. Again, I think that these sorts of arguments really underestimate the thinking capacity of the people. The denizens of Belobog are not the same as children in Sila's analogy. They are adult citizens perfectly capable of forming their own opinions that have a right to the truth. Not to mention wanting to preserve trust in a government that has been covering stuff up for the past 700 years is just not really an argument that you can use. I mean, if you need to lie to have people to trust you because the truth will make them distrust you, then maybe people shouldn't trust you because, well, you're not trustworthy. 
At this point, Branya and Sila are asking for citizens to place unwarranted, unconditional trust in them that they do not deserve at all. They really are no better than your least favorite politician. That pretty much summarizes everything I hated about the Eurelo 6 ending. As always, I'm open to discussion and I'd love to hear any other arguments for or against Branya. Thank you for watching.